So our next presenter, uh, Professor Ilir Murteza from uh, the Department of Social Sciences. He's a professor of economics. And he's going to talk to you about to de-dollarize or not to de-dollarize a monetary policy dilemma. Ilir. Thank you. <laughs> well, as Marty said, I'm Ilir Miteza, professor of economics and social sciences. Uh, I'm going to talk about a project that started with a paper with my uh, former colleague at the Central Bank of Albania. Uh, that's the Central Bank of Albania right there. It didn't look like that when I used to work there 20 years ago. So the, the main focus of the paper was to actually look at money demand. How much money does an economy need? So um, I'm hoping that the next slide will be, will be uh, upright. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how much money does an economy need? So the, the, the paper revolves around this question and actually asks, does that amount of money change over time and what makes it change? So, this is obviously important for central banks because, because they use money to actually influence the economy. They use money to keep employment and inflation uh, where they need to be. Um, in this paper, uh, we actually look at the stability of money demand. Uh, and the main, our main concern is actually, and focus, is to actually tease out the role of exchange rates, tease out the role of foreign currency in this economy. So have you ever, and that's by the way, that's the title of the paper right there, exchange rates, we just finished, uh, finished that, and uh, it has to be submitted soon. So the main questions uh, here are the following. So for instance, for you, have you ever thought about how you decide how much cash and how much uh, to keep in your checking and savings accounts? Uh, if you're, if you're like me, you probably don't have a complex algorithms for deciding that, uh, that question, right? But we have good rules of thumb uh, that, are, that are, are dependent on a few things that we sort of intuitively, intuitively know and understand. Things like, for instance, how high is, is the interest rate? If the interest rate were to go up to 20 today, you'll probably be searching your couches for quarters and dimes <laughs> to go and deposit them in a, in a savings account. But also, how much money do we need to buy, right, for daily transactions, for, for sales and purchases, right? And that's approximated by our incomes, by our paychecks, but for the entire economy, approximated very well by the GDP, the gross domestic product. Um, and the main focus was this other question. In other words, does the exchange rate play a role? Now, of course, for a country like the United States, we never think about what the exchange rate is when we make decisions on how much money to hold, right? We just don't. Maybe we think about the exchange rate when we're preparing for a trip overseas. But actually, that's not the case in other countries, OK? In other countries, people actually think, OK, and calculate, right, their money holdings, depending on what the exchange rate is. And they decide how much to keep in local currency and how much to keep in dollars or in euros. That's certainly the case in Albania, where people hold dollars and euros to hedge against risk. So this is where the new project is starting, OK? And what I have is sort of the plan for the new project at this point. Uh, and so that includes the dollarization of the economy, which actually the central bank has made uh, into a priority. The Central Bank of Albania has made into a priority for this coming year, actually for this coming uh, five to 10 years, in fact. It's a long-term project. Um, so dollarization, what is it? Let's talk briefly, uh, briefly about that. Um, a dollarized economy is an economy that has excessive reliance on foreign currency. People hold a lot of foreign currency, and people also use a lot of foreign currency for transactions, especially for big ticket items like real estate, cars, and so on. Um, so that's the, that's the focus. How serious is dollarization in a country like Albania? Or how big is it? 
Well, this gives you a sense. About 50% of all deposits are in either US dollars or in euros, okay? And the rest, of course, are in the domestic, in the local currency, LEC. Um, that, there are good and bad things about that, okay? So let's, let's talk about uh, the, the good thing. Dollars and euros as a safe asset, as a way to di diversify savings, okay? That is a good thing. So, um, however, this is not an issue here. We don't use euros here or an MB to actually diversify our savings. At least not sort of, we don't think about it that way. We may, may buy you know, foreign stocks, but not necessarily just currency. This, however, becomes a problem for monetary policy. And why is that? Because the less local currency there is in an economy, the less traction they have. The less influence they have on, the, on employment, on inflation, on the things that they want to move up or down, as the case may be. That's the policy di dilemma. Do they de-dollarize or do they not? Right? Do they force people to actually hold less dollars and euros or, or do they leave this alone? So talking briefly about each of those two sides of that policy um, seesaw. One, de-dollarizing. Okay? There are ways to actually force and make it more inconvenient, more expensive for people to hold foreign currency. They can do that. Um, uh, and the problem is that that could force more people into other assets, like real estate, for instance. Okay? That, could, that could cause a housing bubble. What's the, other, what's the other alternative is to actually leave this alone and to live and to live with a less effective monetary policy, which could actually put the central bank's existence at risk. Okay, it would sort of make them, render them ineffective and really redundant, okay? So um, my plan is to look at experiences in other countries, Israel, you know, they're, they're, they're a long, there's a long list of uh, emerging developing economies that have gone through this and to see basically whether they have suffered from asset bubbles or other unintended consequences of de-dollarization. Uh, what are some policy alternatives depending on how this thing goes and what I find? Well, you could slow walk de-dollarization, okay, because they've actually started it. So I, I don't think they'll, they're, they're going to do a U-turn and say we're not doing it after all. So slow walk it and buy yourself time for some good macro policies, low inflation so people can trust in the local currency, confidence can build, and, and there's less reason to actually hold foreign currencies, or an aggressive de-dollarization which involves something that is almost just as hard to pull off, which is really to find other alternatives, uh, other safe assets. Thank you. How did I do?